മാർത്തോമൻ നന്മയാലൊന്നു തുടങ്ങുന്നു നന്നായി വരണമേ ഇന്ന് ഉത്തമനായ മീ ശിഹാ തിരുവുള്ളം ഉണ്മായെഴുന്നൾക്ക് വേണം Wow. Grandpa, why is this cross different from the ones we see in America? Good question. I'm glad you noticed it. You know, this is known as the Persian cross because the inscriptions on the side are in Sasanian Pahlavi or Middle Persian language. Now, look at the other cross. It has the same Persian inscription on the sides and an inscription in the Syriac language at the bottom. These are replicas of the Persian cross at Chennai. in Tamil Nadu that was made sometime in the 7th century AD so grandpa do you mean to say that there were christians in india back in the 7th century AD yes there were christians in india even in the 1st century AD that is our tradition it is believed that saint thomas one of the 12 apostles of jesus arrived in kerala in 52 AD 
at the ancient port city of Mosiris. The city is presently known as Parur Patanam. The apostle established seven Christian communities in various parts of the region. After about 20 years of intense missionary work, the apostle died a martyr. This happened at Chennai in the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu. Mail mail to Wow, that's great. So, our great-great-great-grandparents got their faith from an apostle of Jesus. You got it. This is something that you and I can really be proud of. But grandpa, how did the Persian connection come by? Well, that happened with the migration of Christians from Persia. In 345 AD, a group of Christians from Persia, present-day Iran and Iraq, migrated to Kerala under the leadership of a merchant called Knai Thomen, Thomas of Cana. Their presence strengthened the Christian faith in this part of the world. Their cultures, Persian and Indian, fused with and enriched each other very smoothly and peacefully. As a result of this association, the Christian worship in Kerala developed according to the model of the Persian liturgy in the Syriac language. The Hindu and Christian communities cooperated with each other in many aspects of day-to-day -day life. Even the architecture of many of the churches resembled that of the Hindu temples. In the traditional caste hierarchy, the Christians enjoyed upper status. They were accorded 72 privileges similar to those of the aristocratic classes. Thus, Christianity became an integral part of the social fabric of Kerala. Christians lived in harmony with Hindus, Muslims, Jews and others. Although there were extensive sharing of socio-cultural life, the Christians maintained the core of their Christian life, their liturgy in Syriac, a form of Aramaic, the language that Jesus and his disciples spoke. All these together gave a unique identity to the Indian Christians. Somewhere along the line, definitely before the 16th century, Christians in India coined a phrase to express their unique identity within the multi-religious and cultural context of South India. Mar Thomada Margavum Varipadam Margavum Varipadam This saying may be roughly translated as the way and the lineage of St. Thomas. Interestingly, 
The phrase consists of words from three completely different linguistic backgrounds. From Aramaic, Mar, meaning Holy, Lord, Saint. Thoma, for Thomas. And from Sanskrit, Marg, that is, Way. And finally, from Tamil, Varibad, meaning Lineage. This combination of languages in the phrase is but one testimony to the confluence of cultures and thought processes that took several centuries to shape. You see, my son, the form of Christianity practiced in India in the first 15 centuries was Eastern. Now, the history took a different turn with the arrival of Vasco da Gama in Kerala in 1498. You mean the Portuguese traveler? Yes, Vasco da Gama visited Kerala three times. You know, he died in Cochin in 1524 and was buried there. Really, Grandpa? Really? Even I realized it only recently. Vasco da Gama brought Portuguese missionaries who started introducing the Western Latin Christian practices in Kerala, including liturgy in Latin. The missionaries also converted many local people into the Roman Catholic faith. Thus, the Latin Church flourished in Kerala through the zealous activities of the Jesuits, Franciscans, Carmelites and others. St. Francis Xavier was one of the pioneering missionaries. Now back to the St. Thomas Christians. The St. Thomas Christians welcomed Vasco da Gama and his companions who were pleasantly surprised to see a prosperous Christian community here. However, the initial exuberance faded slowly when the missionaries came to know more closely the life of the St. Thomas Christians. Politically, the St. Thomas Christians were subject to the local Hindu rulers. Ecclesiastically, they professed allegiance to the Chaldean Patriarch in Babylon and received bishops from the Persian Church. The Western Christians viewed the East Syrian Church as Nestorian, that is, followers of Nestorius, the Patriarch of Constantinople. Nestorianism had been condemned as a heresy. Besides, the missionaries who were unfamiliar with Eastern and Indian forms of Christianity became skeptical of some of the practices among the local Christians. Many years of uneasy debates went by. The last Persian Archbishop of India, Mar Abraham, died in 1597. During the vacancy, the leader of the Portuguese mission in India, Alexis Menezes, Archbishop of Goa, took an unprecedented step that changed the course of history of Christianity in India. The Archbishop decided, on presumed authority, to convene a synod with priests and laymen from every parish of the St. Thomas Christians in order to bring the Indian Church in conformity with the Latin Church. The Synod was held at Udayamperur, Diamper as they called it, in central Kerala in June 1599. Following the Synod, the Archbishop saw to it that a Portuguese bishop appointed over the Christians. However, many St. Thomas Christians revolted against this move. In 1653, a group of St. Thomas Christians gathered at the church in Matanjeri near Kochi and took an oath that they would never subject themselves to the authority of the Jesuit Archbishop Garcia. The event is known as Kunan Kurishus Satyam, that is, Oath at the Bent Cross. According to oral tradition, the St. Thomas Christians who assembled at the Matancheri church tied a rope around the cross installed at the premises. They took the oath holding the rope. Probably the cross bent over. At any rate, 
the bent cross oath became a watershed in the history of Christianity in India. The community was divided into two. That is sad. Yes, but not really. Such conflicts and their resolutions are part of the growth and evolution of any organization or even an organism. <laughs> These conflicts eventually contributed to the rich and colorful texture of Indian Christianity. Ito ito zumar shubaholam kire Basali basali be me nabudu khare ko basali basali be me At the request of a group of St Thomas Christians who revolted against the Portuguese the patriarch of Antioch sent Mar Gregorius the bishop of Jerusalem to Kerala neither the patriarch nor bishop gregorius was in communion with rome the visit of bishop gregorius in 1665 became the first step in the history of the relationship between indian christians and the syrian orthodox church this connection also led to the introduction of the antiochian liturgy in kerala bohola bola boro al ruho kadishu aso hawa This liturgy is in West Syriac whereas the Persian liturgy is in East Syriac. In 1814, the Church Missionary Society, an auxiliary society of the Church of England, became active in Chennai. The society sent missionaries to Kerala where they came into contact with the leaders of the Syrian Orthodox group. Initially, the relationship between the Church Missionary Society and the ancient Orthodox Church in India was very good. They came with what they called the mission of help and they promoted education. The English language was taught for the first time in Kerala in this ancient building. and they helped us with the translation of the bible from syriac into malayalam they even started a press here to print the bibles and other christian literature eventually the relationship between the british missionaries and the orthodox church turned sour as they tried to interfere with the doctrinal teachings of the church and they had to leave the seminary in some 10 years but under the influence of the missionaries a reformed party was born in the church which finally led to the formation of the Mathoma Syrian church at the end of the 19th century in the 1930s yet another group under the leadership of the late mar ivanius reunited with the catholic church and came to be called syro malangara church they continue to use the antiochian liturgy Today the St Thomas Christians live in a cluster of eight sister churches Syro Malabar Syro Malankara both in communion with the Catholic Church Yakubite Orthodox Mar Thoma Syrian Church of the East Independent Church of Thoriur and St Thomas Evangelical Church Besides 
The Latin Catholic Church that had its beginning in India in the 16th century, the communion of the Protestant churches under the title Church of South India, as well as the Pentecostal churches are also part of the colorful spectrum of Kerala Christianity. Fascinating history, Grandpa. Yes, it is. And more fascinating is the present. Mm -hmm. Today, Christianity is more vibrant than before in Kerala. In India, there are over 25 million Christians, about 2.5% of the total population. Kerala is home for over 6 million Christians, that is, more than 19% of the total population of the state. Pularil nidrayun 